Hey guys, it's your friendly neighbourhood Ed Bud. Today I'm going to be talking about breathable shoes. So with summer in full swing now and those mercury levels rising fast, what are the best shoes for high humidity, super scorcho heat, midsole melting temperatures to keep our fast moving feet safe from the heat? I'm going to be looking at some of the shoes that I found to be the most breathable, enabling us to keep our feet nice and cool. Some really good options available. I'm going to list a few, not in any particular order. There's loads of others that are pretty good too. If your favourite breathable shoe isn't in this list, don't fret, don't worry, I'm not beating up on a brand or if I've left one out that you particularly like, that's okay. It's alright for us to have different opinions. So in no particular order, the first shoe up is the Asics Meta Racer. I found this up to be exceptionally good in the warm weather that we've got right now. Aside from the various ventilation holes that you can see on the upper itself, of course you've got those ports in the toe, and then also in the heel there, those sections there are cut out and there's even more ventilation. I think Asics did quite a lot of study actually into the effective temperature of the foot on performance over time. So there's quite a lot of study that's gone into the making of the Meta Racer to ensure it's a very breathable offering. Obviously anything you can do to try and reduce the heat in a shoe, allow some more air onto the foot, it's gonna keep you cooler over the miles. Maybe it's gonna reduce that heart rate a tiny little bit. Asics have said there's a multi-directional mesh here. You can kind of see it going in diagonals. And let's not forget how light this shoe is as well. 238 grams in my UK size 11 is quite frankly amazing. I think that a lower weight shoe is bound to keep you a little cooler in these hot temperatures, certainly during a race. Second on this list in no particular order is the Adidas Takumi Sen 6. Certainly a very breathable shoe from Adidas. One of the first to feature that cellar mesh material in the upper. It really is a sock-like fit. I'm not sure I'd want to wear it without a sock. I've always liked wearing this shoe with a quite a thin racing sock. Feels best that way. It's only 228 grams, this shoe. Very, very light. I think when I measured it in my initial review, there was something wrong with the scales there. They come in a bit low, but on my new scales, it does say 227 or 228. I think one shoe's slightly heavier than the other. Just a single layer mesh in this one, it really is very, very thin. If you go through some puddles or some wet areas, Water does escape from it very easily. The tongue is wafer thin, which is ideal when you want a lightweight, very breathable shoe. There's a few little holes cut out of the tongue as well, just to aid in breathability. I think that can be a little bit of a two-edged sword when you've got a very thin tongue. If it's too thin, obviously the laces can cut into the top of the foot a little bit. Certainly when you're thinking about racing shoes, you do want to cinch them down a little tighter. I think most people will be all right using this for a five or 10K, but I think those more able runners could probably take it up to a half marathon. I'm not sure many would want to go above that in this shoe. This cellar mesh stuff really is exceptionally light. I think that's what helps to make this shoe as light as it is. So I'm keen to see how it performs on some of the other top end Adidas shoes that are coming out soon. Talking of lightweight, the third shoe is probably one of the lightest shoes that I've got, the Reebok Float Ride Run Fast Pro. I picked this one up only the other day. It's ridiculously light and very, very breathable. The tongue's got loads of holes cut out of it. The whole mesh upper is just really breathable with loads of little slots cut out. So much ventilation there and very minimal amounts of padding. It's just a little bit in the back of the heel. The rest of it is literally just that one layer upper. Definitely the most breathable shoe in the whole of my collection right now. Really is barely there in terms of weight. I think this one was 128 grams. I measured it three times just in case. Certainly a great shoe for those hot and humid runs when you really want something light and airy on foot. Another shoe that sprung to mind that perhaps you might not think of as being breathable was the Hoka Oni Oni Rincon. Certainly a quite affordable shoe from Hoka. It's not the most expensive by any stretch of the imagination. And again, a quite light option with that single layer mesh throughout the upper. In fact, I could have done with a little bit more upper on this one. It was a little bit snug, certainly around the ball of the foot here. Though the tongue did have a little bit more padding to it, I always found it quite a breathable shoe. I think that most of the weight actually in the Rincon is within that midsole unit. As such, I think it deserves a place on this list. Certainly the toe box has vented really well. I can remember running in some quite wet conditions in this shoe actually, quite humid conditions in it. Always perform well. I mean, yes, there's a bit more padding in the back of the shoe and this huge pull tab. 
not entirely sure it's needed. But certainly as uppers go in terms of breathability, there's much worse than the Rincon out there. I think a good option for those wanting a daily shoe with a reasonably breathable upper, though with a bit of a penalty of quite quick midsole and outsole wear. So that's some of my favorite breathable options. As I said earlier, there are loads of others and you've probably got some great ideas too. There are a few shoes though that I would certainly avoid in terms of breathability. Some of them have got a little more upper than they need. Lots of different layers within that upper that just makes them quite a stuffy shoe. And you know what happens when you've got a stuffy shoe starts to smell. Sadly, the upper on the Asics Nova Blast is actually one of those shoes. It's just quite thick actually in the toe box. Really does feel like there's quite a lot of upper around your foot. I think Asics have just overdone it a little bit in that upper. And it's certainly not one I can recommend in terms of breathability. A shoe that charted very highly on the recent viewers top five shoes of 2020 so far was the New Balance 1080 V10. It performed great for me in the colder months earlier this year, but on a quick test run earlier on, I did find it very warm. It's quite a plush feeling upper to me. There's lots of additional mesh layers here and the upper's actually relatively thick. Didn't seem to let an awful lot of air in there. And as such, I think you might start to feel the lava from the shoe around your foot. Oh, I loved old Botham here. The Saucony Triumph 17. It's got lovely cushion. It's certainly versatile and of course, that beautiful insole. But sadly, with all that cushion, there comes some weight, 348 grams. And the super plush upper is one of the warmest that I've got in my collection. Still a great shoe though, I'm not knocking this one. Both of them and I, you know, we've got a strong bond. It's a real all-rounder, this one. Just perhaps not for the warm summer months. Do you have a breathable shoe that you can recommend to the other viewers out there? Please let me know in the comments. A musical interlude. I've been listening to a new band I found called The Rolling Blackouts Coastal Fever. Great band name. Their latest album is called Sideways to New Italy. The driving drums and interesting guitar work is certainly really great for running purposes. First track on the album, the second of the first is really great. Some nice acoustic work in there. There's some really memorable hooks on this album. She's There as well is another really good track. I do recommend you check these guys out. A really great, really fresh sound, ideal for the summer. I really do appreciate you tuning in and watching through to the very end of the video, guys. I can't believe we've smashed through 7,000 subscribers. I think we're actually on 7,100 right now. It's down to you, the viewers. I do appreciate you tuning in. All this simply wouldn't happen. If you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe button and click the bell below for notifications of when we launch the new videos. It helps the channel out a huge amount if you give this video a thumbs up and make sure you share it with your running buddies. My name's Ed Bud, and I'll be seeing you.